What's going on YouTube? Bacon here bringing you another video. This one gonna be my week 3 match for the VPL. Uh, this week we're going up against Tyler Champion from Season 3. Um, as you guys may recall, he beat us in the championship game. Very close game last time we played. Pretty much every time we've played Tyler has been kind of like gut-wrenchingly close and rife, rife with 50-50. So I uh, was kind of expecting no different here. He's got a very strong offensive team and it really has a pretty good matchup on paper versus mine, I think. Um, so let me just get right into the team matchups. So he has available the Tyranitar, Gyarados, Chandelure, Flygon, Virizion, Cryogonal, Mega Scizor, Raikou, Scolipede, Comfey, and Miltank, one of my personal favorites. So a um, couple things off the rip. Gyarados is a huge threat, like DD variants of Gyarados, hugely problematic. Chandelure is hugely, hugely problematic. Uh, Raikou is pretty problematic, if, especially if he's carrying Aura Sphere or if he's like a subtoxic kind of Vinku type set. Uh, and Comfey pretty much hard denies my Hydreigon from coming. Uh, if I was considering bringing it before the Comfey, I was certainly not afterwards. Tyranitar is also kind of a problem for Hydreigon, so I didn't feel like it was the best matchup for it. Same for Victini with the Tyranitar lurking around. If I go for a fire move, I can't be locked into the fire move because Shin lures around. And if I lock myself into V-Create, I'm going to get Pursuit Trap by the Tyranitar. Uh, just not really a good look for Victini. I actually didn't think he'd bring Mega Scizor anyways, which was the main thing I wanted Victini for. Uh, but as you can see, he didn't end up bringing it, so I'm going to have to deal that, with that in due time. Uh, did I miss anything else that I was thinking of before the game? No, that's about it. Um, big threats, basically the Raikou, Chandler, Gyarados. Skullpeed's a pretty big threat as well, but Aggron can deal with it fairly well, as well as Buzzwool. Um, Gyarados was the setup sweeper I was a little bit more concerned about this match, so... Uh, let's get right into what I built, why I built it. Um, coming in here, starting out with Mega Agron. Remembered the nickname this time, uh, Mega Agron. Running a kind of weird set. I'm running Earthquake, Heavy Slam, Thunder Punch, and Fire Punch. So four attacks on Mega Agron. Running Max Attack, Adamant, uh, Rest Dumped into HP. So this thing just hits his team like a truck. I should Oko Chandelure with Earthquake. I should Oko Gyarados with uh, Thunder Punch as long as he's Moxie, not Intimidate. Um, Although I think I can even kill offensive variants of Intimidate, if I'm not mistaken, uh, with Thunder Punch. So basically deny that thing from setting up for free in my face. Uh, not that it can do too, too much to Aggron in the first place. Like, my physical defense stat, even uninvested, is still massive, so it's going to take a lot to break through Aggron for him, uh, which is why I felt like I could get away with a set like this. Just do a ton of damage to his team. Heavy Slam, Oko's the Comfey, which is very notable, because Comfey, Kamban Comfey, would be a pretty big problem otherwise. Um... For sure. Fire Punch is there specifically for the Scizor. It also hits Verizion, maybe a... Actually, I think it does the same damage as Heavy Slam. Heavy Slam might be base 120 versus Verizion. Not certain. Maybe it's base 100. Not sure. Uh, but either way, able to hit the Verizion uh, very hard, but Fire Punch is there specifically for the Mega Scizor. Heavy Slam just does a huge number on most of his team. Just perfect coverage here for the Aggron, really. I think I can hit everything super effectively, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, I can hit everything super effectively, and then in cases where it doesn't really matter as much, I can go for the, uh, go for the heavy slam over the super effective move. Oh no, I can't hit Miltank super effectively, but Miltank's not doing too much back to me anyways. Uh, I don't even want to stay in on Miltank in the first place, because Seismic Toss is actually a good way for him to chip down the Aggron, um, for sure, going forward. So, uh, yeah, four attacks Aggron here, hoping to complete some work. Uh, I thought it, I thought it looked really nice versus his team, and it's something a little bit different than maybe what he was expecting to see. Next up, we got Bane the Buzzwool here, running Koba Berry Buzzwool with Bulk Up, Drain Punch, Roost, and Thunder Punch. Uh, I can live a neutral Z bounce from the Gyarados. I can also live a neutral bounce or a regular bounce at plus one, uh, thanks to the Koba Berry, and I can blow that thing away with Thunder Punch. Um, running max HP, close to max Fizz Def Impish Nature. This is a really bulky variant of Buzzwool. It's meant to take on uh, things like the Scolipede and the Mega Scizor, for example. Also does pretty well against Tyranitar. I can come in on that thing for relative free anyways. I know Tyranitar does get Aerial Ace, but even that shouldn't do too much to me. And I should be faster so I can roost off damage. I can bulk up uh, and pose kind of a threat to his team that way. Obviously Chandelure is something I have to worry about him bringing on me. Like Thunder Punch won't do too much to that thing, especially when I'm not bulked up. Uh, but this thing can take hits from a lot of stuff on his team. Tyranitar, Flygon, uh, Scizor. Although Scizor could also be carrying Aerial Ace, which would do a lot more than a Tyranitar Aerial Ace because of Technician. Um... Yeah, it doesn't take hits from a lot of his team uh, on the special side, of course, but I think it comes in pretty nicely on things like Miltank, Tyranitar, Flygon, Scolipede, stuff like that uh, over the course of the match. It can definitely threaten out. So 
Uh, that's the idea behind the Buzzwool set. Next up here, we got Birdbrain the Tornadus, running a Salt Vest Tornadus. U turn, knock off, superpower, and heat wave, running a hasty nature max attack. Uh, what max attack allows me to do is blow through uh, Tyranitar with superpower. I don't think it Oko's from full, but it should do a good chunk of damage. U turn into superpower will kill that thing, so I can U turn the first time I'm in on it and then superpower later. I felt like Tyranitar was one of his more likely switch into Tornadus on his team. Uh, that and Raikou basically uh, made the most sense to me. I can live a Thunderbolt from Raikou from full because even if he's choice specs, I can knock that off. Uh, by staying in, I mean, his choice scarf, he shouldn't knock me out, and I can just knock off into U-turn and get some big damage off on him. Uh, because Raikou's not one of his Z-users for this game, I have no fear of just staying in and going for knockoff against that thing as long as I'm at a reasonable amount of HP. Uh, so, knock off into U-turn on that thing should be pretty good. U-turn guaranteed breaks the sub on no HP invested Raikou, um, so that'll be something I'll have to count during the game if he's HP invested or not. I feel like Vinku definitely has some potential for, uh, versus me. Subcom Mine is also pretty scary. Uh, basically, the main thing he'd have to worry about is like my uh, is my Pylos Wine. So if he's running Vinku with Toxic, uh, that can deal with the Pylos Wine upon switch in um, if he gets a sub up and then uh, if he's running aura sphere that can also obviously do some pretty good damage to pilot swine so um yeah just gotta watch out for that during the course of the match but i really liked the more physical off uh, physically offensive tornado spring this time heat wave is there specifically for the scissor but uh otherwise like i mentioned uh max attack investment on the tornadoes get to remove a lot of items from his team you turn around that kind of thing uh for pretty free Next up is Cranky Kong the Kamala coming to its first game of the new season. Running Leftovers Kamala with Earthquake, Toxic, Return, and Rapid Spin. Max HP, Max Spidef Kamala. This is just kind of a secondary check to things like Raikou. If it starts to get out of control, a secondary check to something like Chandelure. If it starts to get out of control, I can get a Toxic on that thing, which would be great if it's Calm Mind Chandelure, which definitely has potential versus me because of the Vaporeon. Um, just really scary Pokemon in general to deal with is that Chandler. So Kamal's a kind of good secondary check to it. It's a good way to clear hazards. I didn't feel like uh, I wasn't able to run Defog on Tornadus this week because I'm running Assault Vest. Uh, so definitely needed some way to remove hazards versus him. I felt like he prioritized Stealth Rocks uh, this matchup because of the Tornadus and the Victini, uh, or Spikes even with his uh, Skullipede. So uh, Rapid Spin's just really nice on the Kamal. I'm also immune to Toxic Spikes if he happens to get those up, uh, so I can spin those away later in the game, and Earthquake can deny the Spin Block from the Chandelure. Um, obviously, I have to watch out for the Gyarados. This is kind of Gyarados setup bait. Um, that thing's just a huge threat, man. <laughs> this is kind of Gyarados setup bait, so I have to be careful about that. Um, but yeah, just a pretty good matchup overall, I felt like, for Kamala in this game. Uh, being immune to status specifically is really nice to deny, like, the mill tank. I can toxic that thing without it toxicing me back. Things like that I felt like were pretty valuable uh, for the Kamala here. Next up, we're bringing Grace once again. The Vaporeon running leftovers, water absorb, water absorb of course. Uh, Scald, Hidden Power, Electric, Wish, and Heal Bell. I feel like he could run like a sub DD variant of Gyarados or even like a taunt variant of Gyarados, something like that, uh, to deal with Vaporeon. Um, that way I can't like haze or roar him out while he sets up. So HP Electric obviously guaranteed breaks the substitute on, uh, on Gyarados and it should too at KO him um, for most ranges he's at, I think. Uh, so a little bit of mind games there with HP Electric. I don't actually have Protect on this set, uh, like I said. So uh, Scald, HP Electric, Wish, and Heal Bell. So no Protect. Um, so it's going to be some mind games if I go into Vaporeon as he DDs. Like does he Z on the Protect or does he DD again predicting a Protect? What's he going to do there? Uh, it's going to be really important going forward. Obviously Gyarados is pretty likely to get him on, I feel like, if it DDs on me this game. Um, but it, I made sure at least that the Vaporeon was in total setup bait with the HP Electric here. Uh, at least. Of course, the Wish Pass is always super nice for Aggron. It also helps me get into my Tornadus a little bit easier uh, on like a hit from a Chandelure, like if I'm predicting Energy Ball out of the Chandelure or something like that. I can Wish up into my Tornadus and get it back to full uh, upon switching, which is also really nice to keep the Pylos Swine healthy. If it goes Raikou on my, on my Vaporeon, I can Wish up, get free out into my Pylos Swine uh, on the Wish. Heal Bell is just nice to remove stats from my team. I can trade Toxics and stuff like that. Uh, trade status with his team a little bit. The mill tank's definitely a bigger concern in terms of spraying status around my team for sure, uh, but heal bell's nice for that, uh, to protect me from that as well. Last up here, we've got Gurgi the Pilot Swine running Eviolite, of course, with Thick Fat ability, Rock Tomb, Earthquake, Ice Shard, and Stealth Rock. Rock Tomb basically just ensures that the Gyarados isn't going to get super out of control in terms of speed. Uh, 
that doesn't super help me this matchup now that I'm looking at it because I don't have a lot of fast mons besides Tornadus and Tornadus can't really touch Gyarados this match. Uh, <laughs> maybe a little bit of an oversight on my on my part there. Rock Tomb also would help slow down the Chandelure if he's like a Z Sunny Day variant or a Flame Charge variant or anything like that. Uh, Rock Tomb should be good for that. Uh, I'm running a lot of Spadef investment on this Pylos Y, max HP with a lot of Spadef. Uh, helps me take hits a lot better from Raikou and I can also take a plus two energy ball from uh, like a Calm Mind variant of Chandelure or something like that. I think it can also take a plus, maybe not plus one Z energy ball. Not certain on that one. Probably not. Um, but I can take some hits from the Chandelure if need be and blow that thing up with an Earthquake. I am running Adamant with a little bit left into a physical attack as well to help me out. Um, and then Ice Shard is just there for the priority to pick off things like the Verzeon um, and the Flygon if they start to get a little bit out of control. Um, not super sure if he'd bring either of those to this game, but I felt like Ice Shard, I didn't really need Crash, so I felt like Shard kind of filled out the uh, filled out the role for Pylos Wine there. Uh, Rock Tomb is also good for the Cryogonal, actually, just looking at it now. Uh, can slow down the Cryogonal, and obviously Cryogonal's physical defense stat is pretty meager, so if he tries to bring that in uh, to spin away my Stealth Rocks or defog away my Stealth Rocks, uh, I can punish that thing at least with the Rock Tomb. All right, well, that's it for the preview here. Let's get into the match. As you can see, he brought the Mega Scizor, the Raikou, Gyarados, Scolipede, Chandelure, and Verizion. So I feel like I pretty much nailed what he was going to bring, except for the Verizion and I guess the Scizor to some extent. I was kind of expecting to see Tyranitar here uh, to pursue Trap my Victini after going for like a V-Crate or something, uh, or being choice locked of some sort into a fire type move. I felt like kind of made sense for me. Uh, and then either the Comfy or the Mill Tank I was expecting to see. I felt like the Comfy made sense just to deny my Hydreigon. Um, but Verzeon can actually work here pretty well too against what I brought. You can see my three on the right are pretty weak to Verzeon. Uh, and even though it's not going to do a ton, close combat to Aggron still a little bit annoying for me, especially because I can't Oko the Verzeon back. I don't want to be taking that much damage on my Aggron because it needs to be healthy in order to deliver the amount of damage that I want it to this match. So. Um, looking at lead matchup, Tornadus is a pretty free lead on my end, as it usually is. It should be the fastest thing on the field to start the game, um, and things like his Scolipede and his Verzeon should be threatened out by me in the first place, so uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do here is lead with the Verzeon, as he elects to lead right off the rip with Intimidate Gyarados, so not Moxie, which is at least one thing we've got going for us if it is DD, uh, but if he DDs right now, I pretty much have to sack him on. Uh, <laughs> Which is not great. So I'm going to U-turn out directly into my Vaporeon, and I'm basically going to play that mind game with the protects and whatnot. So uh, I'm going to U-turn out here. Like I mentioned, cannot touch Gyarados with this uh, this uh, Tornado set. So U-turning out into Vaporeon here as he actually reveals the Thunder Wave on his Gyarados. So I see Thunder Wave here, and I'm actually about to see lefties in a second. So unfortunately, he misses the Thunder Wave. I do have Heal Bell, but. I mean, th being Parrot is not as bad as being Toxic on my Vaporeon, so I'll take it. But uh, yeah, so he throws off Thunder Wave and has Leftover, so it looks like it's a bulky uh, variant of Gyarados, as he then shows Protect here, uh, just got out what my Vaporeon's going to do. As I show the HP Electric, or what he should assume is HP Electric. Uh, so uh, yeah, it looks like a bulky variant of Gyarados. Glad to see it's not a DD variant, because that was super scary, but uh, yeah, we're just going to throw off a Scald here, predicting him to either risk the Vaporeon, or the Verizion here, or leave his Gyarados in. Getting a burn on Gyarados would be nice. He really can't touch me, I don't think, at this point, so Scald was pretty free here. Unfortunately for Tyler, I do get the burn immediately on the Verzeon coming in. I mean, like, it is a 30% chance, so, and that's what I was going for, but it does suck that it happened on the first one. Uh, what this really only does is means I can go into Tornadus for free all the time on this Verzeon. I was probably going to go out to Buzzwole instead here, but uh, turns out he has choice banned Verzeon. And like I mentioned, I lived every variant of, of Stone Edge. Even there, you can see I can live a crit with my uh, with my Tornadus there. It was pretty free once he was burned. Uh, so I'm just going to go for U-Turn here. I know he's choice banned um, Stone Edge based on that damage, so he does stay in here, which means I can freely go out into my Buzzwole now. Uh, but the burn really did there was take out the 50-50 of like, will he, have, will he go for Aerial Ace or will he go for Stone Edge? Um, it just allowed me to get directly into my Tornadus, which obviously sucks for Tyler, uh, unfortunately, getting that burn early in the game. So uh, Buzzwool is in here. He's got one switch in, and it's Scizor, so I'm going to double out on the Scizor. It was pretty obvious, I feel like, that it was coming in, uh, just because, like I mentioned, he didn't have other good switch-ins to Buzzwool. Like, if I go for Earthquake, Chandelure's a problem, things like that, like, he didn't have a great switch into Buzzwool there besides the Scizor. Uh, so I'm just going to go out to my Tornadus here. What it allows me to get, do is get some Regenerator back after losing a bunch of health earlier on. Uh, and I can just go for Heat Wave on the Scizor. Unfortunately, I get a crit. I believe this was Max Fizz Def Scizor, and uh, that 
was a roll in his favor to live. I don't know what he clicked there. Oh no, he clicked Toxic there, uh, which I did have Heal Bell on the Vaporeon for. So I was willing to trade the damage on Scizor for pretty much anything he was going to try to do to me. Um, but yeah, so really unfortunate for Tyler. Again, another crit there. Again, another kind of lucky play there. So uh, going for the knockoff here on the Raikou. I already talked about this in my team builder. I can stay in on Raikou if I'm at enough health, which I am, uh, to level Thunderbolt. Go for knockoff and then just U-turn out the following turn. And it does look like he's no HP invested Raikou based on the knockoff damage. So I was sure my U-turn would break a potential substitute here uh, and do some good damage to him besides if he didn't go for substitute. So I'm going to U-turn out on the Raikou here. And predicting a Toxic, I'm actually going to go into my Kamala. Unfortunately, he just goes right for the T-Bolt. Um, that was kind of a 50-50 whether I go into the Pilos Wine or not, but I didn't want to risk it being like a sub-toxic variant of uh, Raikou. Cranky Kong is less important than Pilos Wine here, because Pilos Wine can eat a hit from pretty much everything on his team, actually, if I need it to. Um, especially the Chandelier is the main thing I'm looking at here. So I feel like Pilos Wine is a better kind of defensive check, not a switch in, but defensive check to the Chandelure than uh, Kamala is, so I'd rather sack off Kamala here to kill the Raikou uh, than anything else. He does show the Aura Sphere, gets a crit, but I don't think that really ends up mattering too much in the long run, um, as Kamala is going to be able to eat that and KO this Raikou with Earthquake, so things are going a lot better for me than I expected to this point in the match, uh, but he's still got some pretty big threats left on his side of the field. The Chandelure is the thing I'm most scared of at this point in the match. Uh, the Skull is a little bit annoying, but my Buzzwool is pretty full and my Aggron is pretty full, so I'm a little more scared of the Chandelure for sure. Um, here the Skull comes out, and I basically just can't let him get free set up. I need some damage off so that Ag Aggron can revenge kill this thing. Uh, so I'm just going to go for the return here on the Skull as he shows Toxic Spikes. That Toxic Spike is actually a little bit annoying because I do have the Buzzwool, Pylo, and um, Vaporeon in the back, all of which obviously do not appreciate that Toxic Spike being up. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of deny him from getting up additional hazards by clicking Rapid Spin here. Rapid Spin would have put him in range of a, another return, uh, so I felt like there was no reason not to, and obviously he's just going to sack off, uh, or I'm just going to sack off the Kamala here as he kills it with Mega Horn. Uh, it does reveal to be Life Orb on his, um, on his Skullipede, and since he didn't go for Earthquake there, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have it. It wouldn't do too much to my Aggron anyways because of my massive physical defense stat and uh, filter, so I'm just going to go out to Aggron here. Based on that damage, Earthquake should KO from this range. He just goes for his second layer of Toxic Spike here. Again, really annoying for those three grounded mons in the back, uh, but I think I can deal with it at least um, to some extent here. So going to Earthquake here, KO the Skullipede, uh, and now he basically has to go out into Chandelure. He could go out, I guess, into Verzion, but that just repeats the cycle with my Tornadus, so I feel like he kind of has to go out into Chandelure here. And the only thing I really can't let this thing do right now is Calm Mind as I go uh, Vaporeon. Unfortunately for Tyler, he misses a Will-O-Wisp as I blow him away with the Earthquake here. Obviously, I would have killed him with two Earthquakes, but uh, it sounded like just Tyler didn't divulge the set, but he seemed confident that this thing could at least put in some work here, if not run it back. Uh, so if it landed that Willow Wisp, so I th thinking based on that it was probably weakness policy, but I don't know what the exact details of the set was, so I can't comment further other than to say I would have 2 it KO'd it with Earthquake, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean he wouldn't have just gone through my team at that point. Uh, I can't really say for sure unless I knew the set, so uh, we'll see what it is in playoffs if we meet there, but uh, unfortunately for Tyler, I'm getting pretty lucky this game with the hacks for sure. Um, and now there's not a whole lot he can do. This is a defensive variant of Gyarados. He's already shown Thunder Wave and Protect. He might have like, I don't know, Waterfall and Taunt or something weird. I'm not sure. Uh, but here I'm just going to stay in and spam Thunder Punch. You can see how much damage that's doing even to this clearly bulky Intimidate Gyarados. Uh, so I'm just going to keep throwing off Thunder Punches here. I've got no reason to do anything else. The Verzeon's not a threat to me. It can't do anything to my uh, Tornadus. So I'm just going to throw off another Thunder Punch here with my Aggron as the Verzeon comes in. Uh, and now I can, like I mentioned, because it's burned, freely go into my uh, Tornadus. There's no 50-50 guessing games with Aerial Ice or Stone Edge because of the burn. So uh, just going to be able to freely go into my Tornadus here as he goes for the close combat. Obviously, it's not going to do very much to my Tornadus because he's burned and I'm flying type. So uh, close combat there. Really, it's just kind of a last-ditch effort. He's basically playing for differential at this point, uh, unfortunately. So I'm just going to be able to U-turn for free here. I'm either going to kill the Verzeon and get into something to kill the Gyarados, or he's going to go Gyarados and get in the thing to kill the Gyarados and click Thunder Punch. Like, uh, the game is pretty much a wrap at this point. Uh, because my Aggron is paralyzed, I don't want to go out into that, uh, because there is some kind of weird haxy way where he can yellow color me to death um, and get back up to full with this Gyarados. So I'd rather just go Buzzwool here, take the Toxic, whatever, uh, and just Thunder Punch this Gyarados right in the face. So uh, Gyarados is going to come out here. 
uh, obviously get the Intimidate drop on me, but he is still in range of Thunder Punch. And it turns out my Buzzwool is actually faster, so he's running no uh, no speed on his Gyarados probably, or not very much speed at least on his Gyarados, and I'm able to knock that thing out with a Thunder Punch from my Buzzwool. A nice 5-0 victory for us. Ob uh, for us. Obviously, very unfortunate with all the hacks I got that game. Would have liked it to be a clean game as always, um, for sure. Especially against Tyler, I feel like we normally have some really hype matches. And this one was just kind of ruined a little bit by the hacks. I would have liked to see how it played out. Otherwise, he definitely brought a lot of stuff I wasn't expecting. Not necessarily Mons-wise, but sets-wise. Um, so if we do get a rematch in the playoffs, definitely going to be on the lookout for Tyler, of course. Especially whatever that uh, Mysterious Chandelier set was. Uh, which, I I'm thinking, like I said, it was weakness policy. Because that would have actually been a huge threat to me here this late in the game. But I don't know for sure. Um... Uh, Definitely something I'll have to prep for, maybe a little bit better in my next match, because looking at it, I am kind of weak to a weakness policy variant of Chandelure. Um, so, definitely something I gotta watch out for, but um, yeah, we do pick up the win this time on the back of some hacks. Sorry again for that, but uh, you know, it's Pokemon. It happens sometimes. It takes nothing away from Tyler. I'm sure he'll still make playoffs because he's a very good player. He's got a great team. Um, I believe he's 2 and 1 now, so uh, we're doing okay, uh, both of us. I'm actually sitting at 3 and 0 for. Maybe the first time in my VPL career. I can't remember when we... Because the season one, we played Tyler early in the season. I can't remember if it was week three or week four, but he beat us then. Uh, so this might be the best start I've gotten off to in the VPL. Uh, means nothing, obviously, because the time I won the championship, I lost my first game, and I lost a couple times in the middle of the season. Uh, it really wasn't actually looking that good for me to make playoffs that season. Basically, my philosophy has always been, as long as I make playoffs... We're good, <laughs> so uh, I, like I feel like I can beat anyone. Like I, obviously there are plenty of very good players in this league that could beat me as well. But uh, I, I feel like as long as I make playoffs, I can j just take it matchup by matchup and, and try and lock down a win. But uh, sitting at three and zero is definitely a nice cushion early in the season. It means I don't have to go super all out on some potential playoff matches like Glumac, Jeff. Uh, who else am I playing that's potential for playoffs later? Dick, uh, Don, even. Uh, who else is on my schedule? Ben. There's a few people still on my schedule that have a decent shot at making playoffs um, that I would rather not have to go super all out and prep for. Like, it'd be nice to win, of course, but uh, having this nice three win cushion here at the beginning of the season is definitely a good thing to lay back on uh, for, to some extent, anyways. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. Sorry again for the for all the hacks this game. It makes for not the greatest uh, not the greatest viewing experience I know, but. Uh, Hopefully we come back next next time with a nice clean game. We're playing Gloomac next week, who's sitting at 2-1. and one. Should be a very good game. Uh, Gloomac's also a very good player. VPL, I think, out of the leagues I've played in, no offense to any of the other leagues I've played in, they've all been very very good as well. But the VPL is just like consistently difficult games, I feel like, um, which is nice. It's good to have like, a very competitive environment in the VPL, which is kind of interesting considering how small of a pool of players we're, uh, we're drawing from. So very proud of, of the league culture we built here like everybody's super friendly and and like not toxic which is great <laughs> and and everybody's like getting a lot better which is also really good to see so um sorry for rambling on a little bit here at the end but i figured with the extra time because it was a shorter match i'd get a little bit of league stuff in but uh yeah thank you guys very much for watching if you did to this point hope you guys tune in for another video and i'll catch you guys next time later